welcome back to Battle School Dropouts. It is 1998, and this is the only podcast on the internet. We are the three internet masters. I am here with the ultimate hacker. He will be in and out before you even know you've been pwned. It's Stu. Hello. <laughs> and the ultimate gamer. All your base <laughs> are belong to him. When he logs on to Overwatch and he's raffle stomping newbies, he needs a mouse and keyboard with precision, and that's why he chooses Razor. It's Brendan. I've, I've been pantsed as a kid and I was less embarrassed than, <laughs> <laughs> than what just... <laughs> See, I'm just thinking the opposite. <laughs> like, <laughs> mockery, it is wild how different our intros are for this... For this show, like I do the We're same thing. History. Stu Everything. is the first podcast in 1998. <laughs> a podcast. They had podcasts. They no, were called radio be, shows. Oh no, yeah, then. that's the podcast for old people. Well, podcasts are <laughs> no. podcasts for old people. Uh, and I am a computer. Stop all the downloading. It's mockery. <laughs> it's a podcast about anime and friendship. Today we watch Serial Experiments Lane, uh, and we have our special guest Brendan joining us today. Hi. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Yeah, so we watched we watched six episodes of Serial Experiment Lane, and now we're gonna try to talk about whatever yeah. just happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Brendan, I gotta ask you, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm getting back out there a little more in the world, which is both terrifying but nice at the same time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's like I keep having to remind myself that it's still like. COVID is a big... And yeah. I say this having caught COVID, <laughs> yeah. Like, that, yeah, no, it's still an issue. <laughs> yeah. So, I've been, like, going to more movies and, like, hidden away at matinee times where no one's seeing them or seeing them in their third week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it felt super weird. I can't... I think I saw, like... I. I I think I saw something before Dune, but I saw Dune and I was like, it just feels weird being surrounded by so many people and whatnot. Yeah, no, totally. I saw a movie too where like, well, okay, there's this, the, the, you know at the Tower Theater, this movie theater in our town, they, they, they actually serve you pint glasses and actual like pint glasses, like the beer. Like, like glass. Do Every time I'm in. drinks at the Tower yeah, Theater? Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. They have beer and cocktails. You gotta get out more. I, I've been to the Tower <laughs> Theater plenty of times. I just never asked, I guess. <laughs> but. The past, like, three movies I've seen there, someone has just shattered a lot. Because <laughs> that's why most theaters have, like, plastic that looks like yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. actual glass. Yeah. One of my favorite memories that I have is when we, we went to go see uh, Ghost in the Shell, the, like, the, the film at Tower Theater, and there was, like, a drunk teenager who wouldn't shut up, and you went and yelled at them. <laughs> it's, like, one of my, like... Brendan did it. Yeah. <laughs> I, in most aspects of my life, I'm a coward, but in like a theater, I feel like a sense of power where I will like to turn around and tell people to like shut up. And like, like I, I could like find the most intimidating person to be like, no, you be quiet during this movie. <laughs> That's your place of power. That's your domain, you know? Yeah. Oh man, it was good. I think I, I mean, maybe I'm misremembering. It was a while ago, but I think everybody was like, yeah. No, some people, some people did like talk and like, clap kind of it was after the movie i went to there and told her that she had like ruined the movie for everyone <laughs> no wait was this was this ghost in the shell 95 or like or like scarlet <laughs> no, no, no. i actually it would have been much funnier if i gave like an impassioned speech i was because <laughs> i thought it was the scarlet johansson one <laughs> and i'm like damn i didn't know you cared like that Scarjo worked so hard on this role. <laughs> she had to become an Asian woman. Exactly. <laughs> she joined the ranks of other white Asian women like Emma Stone. <laughs> Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton. <laughs> I think Emma Stone's done it twice because Sleeping Dogs and the movie Aloha. <laughs> I guess, yeah. It's neck and neck. It's really fierce competition. Oh, there. my God. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It was it was the, the animated version. Okay, good, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a lot more sense. Well, I love that idea. One of the things I remember the most about it, though, too, is, like, they, they they were drinking out of a flask, but it wasn't, like, a regular flask. It was, like, a novelty flask from, like, Spencer's. It, like, fit, like, a fist. It was, oh, like, my God. So <laughs> then you see this fucking kid. I would see, like, this shadow of this giant <laughs> flask raise up in the air. I was just getting so mad. <laughs> oh, that's fucking man. excellent. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> oh man 
So you, you watched anything good? Lately? Um, I saw Licorice Pizza, which I really, really liked. Paul Thomas Anderson's one of my favorite directors. I loved it. Um, in terms of like silly stuff. Yeah, uh, this is a silly podcast. Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm me and me and uh, my partner. We're we we we're, we're make, we like making like theme lists. We're making our like Christmas time list. And we do a mix of, like, bad stuff. So things we're, like, very excited to watch are, like, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part yeah. 5 or something <laughs> like that. Do you, do you like Christmas movies? Ooh. I kind of do. I mean, like, not, like, I don't really like the season more so because I don't, like, it just feels, like, anxiety-filled. I don't mind the actual yeah. day. It's just, like, the expectation of having to, like be around for yeah <laughs> it gives me a lot of anxiety yeah well and there's all the preparation too like you have to buy presents yeah. you gotta do all that stuff yeah but like i don't mind the movies because i actually like i like christmas lights i like it they're it's just like sh- everyone has like neon lights on so i i like that aesthetic yeah, yeah. like that makes me feel good and <laughs> christmas movies i do kind of like how uh, cheesy they are i mean this year i think i'm gonna go for the first time very deep into like the hallmark christmas movies like Ooh. Oh, yeah. Well, like, do you know, like, Lacey Chabert, who's, like, she's one of the people in Mean Girls. She's the one that's not Amanda Seyfried or, uh... Okay. Rachel. She's, like, the one... Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, no. (laughs) Yes. I got it. Yes. But this woman (laughs) has starred in, I think, over, like, 25 Christmas Hallmark movies. Jesus! (laughs) Oh, my God. No, and, like, you look up, like, a list of them that have, like, Christmas Mm -hmm. names and all that, and it is it is wild. Like, how... They're all basically the same, yeah. but slightly different. Wait, now hold on. Is this person playing a different character every time, or is it I like think... a continuity? Oh I, my god! I, Twenty-five Christmas. I mean, I win. I mean, life. that would be the cinematic universe I care about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Christmas cinematic. Fuck the, yeah, Marvel, absolutely. Fuck the Marvel movies. Give me the the, the HCU. <laughs> I guess it would be uh, mm, the HC like TVU. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not quite. It's not quite cinematic. But. I've, I've. So my grandma used to watch like loads of uh, like Hallmark like Christmas movies and whatnot, mm-hmm. or, or just Hallmark movies in general. And those movies are terrifying in like a different kind of way. Like it's like, oh, she has a she has a husband and he's got kind of a high risk job. And like I'm like, is he gonna die? Like he could die at <laughs> any moment and set this plot off. <laughs> And it's like I just don't know. Like I, I feel I feel so much tension watching them. <laughs> that is the joy of watching like a lo- really low rent movie. Is like <laughs> literally they like taste and like doesn't really factor into it. They're like we could just slip this on a dime because it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got I've got one that I absolutely love. Uh, Bernadette and I watch. Uh, it's called Christmas Mail, and it's like it's like a romance Christmas movie that takes place in a post office Mm. but it's like it just slowly starts to fall apart like production wise as the movie goes on like it gets worse and worse to the point that the audio actually like stops lining up and whatnot some of the like the audio takes sound like they were like a first take and then they're like should i redo that nah whatever (laughs) that that's amazing (laughs) well those hallmark movies are shot like super fast when i lived in la i had a friend who worked on a couple of them and he would have like they would shoot all night. He would have like 16, 8, 18 hour days and they would try and shoot like the entire movie in like a week and a half. Jeez. Wow. They like literally pumped them out. There's like, that, yeah, they don't have time for like a second take is a luxury. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That sounds torturous. Jeez. Oh yeah. And then it says like, he was talking about how frustrated he was because he was like, and then it's, so it's always Christmas, it's Christmas themed. So it's like very, like the atmosphere is very cheery than the moment it takes. Everyone's like, tired and angry (laughs) hungry and just like oh boy yeah well that's like working retail during christmas or something like that like anytime you're working during christmas it just drains the christmas spirit out of you (laughs) i worked at a at a best buy over holiday season i knew you two at that point um and i remember thinking like they they constantly played um last christmas uh Mm -hmm. my man but like Mostly covers of it. Like, I didn't know there were, Of course there's that many covers. But, like, I heard, like, every cover there ever was, you know, of that song. And, of course, the original. And by the by the time Christmas comes around, I'm so fucking sick of that song. And I remember <laughs> thinking some very unkind things about George Michael. That was the Christmas he died. Oh, no. Oh, you I you was, killed him? I killed him. I cursed George Michael into the grave. And I, I still, to this day, feel guilty about it. You just oh, needed to get no. that off my chest. Yeah, Sorry well, for killing George Michael. It's a good thing you're doing it in a very public place. Exactly, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if this is what gets me arrested, then hey, it is yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's Christmas is a weird like music genre because there's like there's only eight songs. And there's basically just covers of all of mm-hmm. them. Yeah. With the exception, this is the only weird thing. There's, I, you only hear one version of Feliz Navidad. Yeah. That's yeah. True. No, I've yeah. never heard a cover of that. You hear covers of every other song, but and Feliz Navidad doesn't get it. Yeah. And I, it, I think, I don't know if I've heard a cover of Jingle Bell Rock. Have you guys? Oh, I have to have. Yeah. I, I feel like I had to. Yeah. Yeah. I feel. I feel like in Mean Girls they do a cover of Jingle Bell Rock. No, that's just the song, though. Oh, is it just the song? Yeah, that's uh, just the song. Uh, okay. I th- oh, yeah. Maybe. I, uh, maybe you're right. I, I mean, honestly, I think then music, uh, the music industry is just slacking. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know? I'm that's sure. That's prime for Because co- at least Navi Dodd is like, you know, that that could be a little tricky to cover. Like, what if you're really bad at Spanish? I'm really bad at Spanish. I there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also can't Bell say. is Navi Dad. Yeah. <laughs> And the newest Christmas song ever to come out was that Mariah Carey one, and that was yeah. like twenty years ago, yeah. like, at least. <laughs> but that's been added to the canon of like Christmas oh, yeah. carols. But, because, yeah. Yeah. but the nonsense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there hasn't been. Has there been one song like this is the Christmas song? <laughs> people have, people try, but it just doesn't fucking happen. Well, and that's gotta be the only one that she's like that. That's gotta be the only like Christmas song that like someone has written that like he's getting paid for it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure somebody has the royalties to all the other Christmas classics, but oh, yeah. they didn't write them, you know? Uh, Paul McCartney simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure, he's, he's alive. He's alive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just found out Joe Pesci's alive uh, the other day, so it's, <laughs> I'm still not sure what plane of existence I'm on, who's alive, who's dead, so. You got a Mandela affected. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But like, you can't be wrong if that Joe Pesci came back from the dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's not like a collective consciousness, like we all thought mm. Joe Pesci, it was just me. Just me. <laughs> Him and Wayne Knight, uh, just I thought they were dead for years. Like, knew it like I knew anything else. <laughs> when I was a kid, actually, okay. So I went and saw Batman Returns, the second Tim Burton Batman movie recently. Mm. And the guy who plays Alfred in that movie, he's in all four of those original ones. Like, he plays Alfred in all of them. And in Batman and Robin, the last one, he's, like, dying, and he dies in that movie. And as a kid, I literally thought that meant he was, like, dead. (laughs) It wasn't until, like, I was, like, an adult and I saw him in something else. I was like, wait, he lived? (laughs) (laughs) I don't, like, it was, it, it, it was, like... Actually, just a couple years ago, I saw a movie after that. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I realized, oh, I was just a kid and a fucking idiot. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if maybe that's what it was with, like, Wayne Knight. Like, maybe someone mentions that he dies in Jurassic Park. And I was just like, oh, he died. He's dead now in real life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or the part where the monster falls on him because it's flat. And then they have to, like, I mean, him up I don't know how you recover from that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, man, if I was 2D like that? Ooh. Yeah. Game over. <laughs> Game <laughs> over. <laughs> Um, we, Felicia and I have been watching some, some holiday movies. We've been, uh, experiencing the wonderful world of, like, Christmas rom-coms. Ooh. Uh, we watched, uh, Just Friends with Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Uh, yeah. Where he's, like, he's, like, a fat guy. He's, like, a oh, fat Oh, he's in, like, a fat suit oh, in the beginning of the he's movie. He's in a fat suit, yeah. And he's, like, really sensitive and sweet, but he's, like, really fat. So, so like, everybody, like, makes fun of him except his best friend, who's, like, a very conventionally attractive woman. And then... And then he gets made fun of so bad that he moves to L.A. and becomes, like, a super music exec or whatever. And then comes back and tries to win her over. But, like, and he's not fat anymore. Mm. Um, and it's all about getting out of the friend zone. That's what that movie is. But it's just... Let me guess. This came out in the mid-2000s. It sure did. Yeah. It was, like, 2005, 2006. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly feel like comedies that came out between, like, 2006 and, like, 2012 have, like, aged the worst, the fastest. Absolutely. Yeah. Like... <laughs> They are so racist <laughs> and homophobic, and it's just like, what the hell? Like, it is so bad. You're like, I don't understand how this was only a few years ago. Yeah, I've seen like more offensive '80s things. Than yeah, like, yeah. Well, and it's it's weird that it like, it, you, you, like my my gut reaction for a long time was like, oh, it's a different era. But I'm like, no, it's not. It was like a decade ago. Yeah. Like, it wasn't that different. <laughs> this isn't my grandma using a wrong word. Like, this is. It's two presidents ago. Like, it's very yeah. recent, all things considered. It's kind of wild, too, like, how many of those comedies just aren't funny, mm-hmm. also. Like, it's like, there's the semblance of jokes, but not oh, actual yeah. jokes, you know? I've, 
Well, I've been subjugating my... I'm, like, a masochist in a lot of ways. <laughs> so, like, I've been subjugating myself to watching, like, epic movie, date movie. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> so I've been watching those, and they're kind of fascinating from, like, an anthropological standpoint. Because <laughs> it's just, like, reference, and it's not a joke. It's just yes. literally... So it's, like, these time capsules, and it's really funny to think what these movies thought would be, like, still relevant in the culture years later. Like, one of them has a joke about the movie Jumper. Does anyone, do you remember the movie Jumper? Uh, is that the one where he teleports? Yeah, it's, like, yeah. The, it's like the guy who plays oh. Anakin Skywalker fighting yeah. Sam, Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, yeah, I do remember that, yeah. <laughs> There's, like, a series of jokes about that movie, and I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's it's dumb because like yeah, they're not they're not jokes; they're just references. So, like you watch something like uh, Airplane, and like even if, like that's a lot of references. But even if you don't know the reference, it can still be a fun movie, mm -hmm. you know. I watched um, not another teen movie, which is like oh. should just be like bad, like those other ones, and it's hilarious. That's like a legit good movie. I actually really like that movie. <laughs> that oh, there's so much good stuff in the oh yeah, I that that. And that was like 20 years now. Two now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I've been, I guess back to the Christmas movie thing, but yeah, ups and downs on them. I, I, I like the vibe of them, but sometimes they get a little too sentimental, a little too like, here's all the goodness in people. And it's a little too much. <laughs> yeah. Little too yeah. Much sometimes. <laughs> Well, what was that, uh, that like military Christmas movie we watched uh, last huh? year? Oh, um, uh, oh, it's, it's like, fuck, what was that? Yeah, uh, fuck. It's like, it was about how like this guy was like, we should be able to do Christmas at, in this hall in our town or whatever. And he's like imposing Christmas on like his entire town and it's shown as like this good thing. Yeah, and the, like, uh, should be it was some was there somebody stopping him before? Well the ACLU the mayor. shows up to oh. try to stop him from doing Christmas. The stuff. ACLU what? Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's wild because the ACLU shows up and like they're the villain and they make like they don't they don't even like try to like make these guys appear like villains. Like they the ACLU brings up like really good points. Like you're a government organization. You're not supposed to like endorse a religion. And he's like, well, you know, I just think that we should be able to celebrate the way we want to. And everyone's like, yeah! And he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> when did this come out? Uh, uh, 2012. It's called Last, Last Ounce of Courage. Wow. Last Ounce of Courage. And like, <laughs> so one of the, th okay, I'm just gonna, I'll ruin the climax. I don't care right now. Oh, no, not the spoilers here. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> but, so the, the entire movie is also like, so he's the mayor of the town. He has like an, he has an older son that also died in like Iraq. And so he has a younger brother, too. And then to kind of, like, bring school spirit and also patriotism to school, a little kid for a talent show brings the film of his older brother dying in military combat and shows it to everyone. Yeah. And then everyone stands up, starts clapping, and it's like, I love Christmas and I love America! <laughs> Wow. Yeah, like, like they're just like, here's the final footage of your your husband, your son, and all this, and they don't know that it's like a snuff film, basically. <laughs> yeah, wait, so, they not, are they not aware that this is a real life human dying? No, the kid puts it on as his that's his like last ounce of courage, you know, like the kid defies everything. He puts it on, and everyone watches a man explode in some unnamed American war, and everyone's like, yes. Yeah, that's like the thing. Oh, no, I just said exactly what you said. Oh my god, <laughs> I it's need incredible. to hear that again. I it's can incredible. process it right <laughs> after just once. Yeah, I actually, there are a bunch of those like really far out like Christmas movies. The one I'm actually really excited for to watch this year is this one called 33 AD. Do you guys know about that, this one? No. Okay. Is that the one with, with uh, Jack Black and Michael Sarah? And like, hey, no. <laughs> Can't men wearing a thing in 33 AD. Go on. <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> So, 33 AD. That's the year, according to people, like religious people, that Jesus died. Oh, right. right. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. So, this is a movie about that takes place nowadays, but a far-right Islamic terrorist organization steals a time machine to go back and... <laughs> and what, kill, kill Jesus? Yes! <laughs> but he dies! But he's not on the cross, it becomes a symbol. Then, it's, then other Christians have to go back in time and fight the, the, so the that terrorists. So can die? Wait, what's the... <laughs> So Jesus could die on the cross and become a symbol. I love that there's there's no parody anymore. Like this no. is a movie you would write to make fun of no, like, yeah. Christian extremists. <laughs> nope, but this is just like actually the funny thing is 
It came out under two titles. It <laughs> flopped once, and then he just renamed it and put it out in a theater again oh, under a different rules. name. Wait, did it do better the second time? <laughs> it did. <laughs> So I, I, I'm very excited to watch that one. Yeah, that sounds oh, wonderful. Oh my god, that sounds just amazing. I often okay, like I got I I went to school for film and then I talk I just love talking about shit like this. <laughs> like, like, the, I just love like the trashiest. Trash. Well, there's there's something like so incredible about these like right wing movies where they like they have so much passion that they're putting it into it. But also, like, they never recognize the irony of what they're doing or anything no, like that. No, t- it's... They are the closest thing we have to, like... Well, like, part of the thing I hate about, like, low-budget filmmaking now is people purposely try to make things, like, cheap or schlocky, and that's, like, the joke. They're like... Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like the fucking weedification, like, poke fun at it. But right-wing people are just like, no, nah, what we made is good! <laughs> and they're just very earnest, and you're like, well, this is just awesome because you guys think this is good <laughs> yeah and i just love watching this time to get some gelato yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh there's yeah because yeah you're watching a shitty person bear their soul for mm-hmm. you and you just get to laugh at them yeah. totally yeah and it's just like it's so it's like cathartic to watch yeah. like an insane it's like this is the closest those person will come to doing therapy. It's making this like Yeah, we you know that's a really good point. But it's, there's a reason why these things exist, you know? It's like this is the closest examination of their self they can do. It's like a completely manufactured thing, but it goes it swings so far along the pendulum it's actually like a critic it's it's so weird. It's just like I find it so fascinating. Yeah. Oh absolutely. Yeah. Holy oh. shit. It's Christmas. But anyways, I fucking <laughs> love Christmas. Christmas movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the next episode is gonna be our Christmas one. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Have you figured out if uh the melancholy of Haruhi the disappearance of Haruhi sees me apparently Damn it. that's a Christmas special apparently that's the a melancholy Christmas. of Haruhi sees me is the show that comes before it. So yeah. you weren't you weren't wrong. That does exist. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's gonna call it the misery of because I just saw misery oh. the other day, so <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, pretty um, close. <laughs> yeah, so that's my favorite Christmas movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited for that one. Yeah, that, that shows that shows fun. But like a show called The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. <laughs> yep. What what genre would you put The Melancholy of Haruhi? I imagine that's out of like a sad teenager show or something. See, that's what I thought too. Apparently, comedy. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's a, okay, so it's a show it's like about a of sad teenager. Kind of. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so there's this girl named Haruhi Suzumiya. She really it loves the idea of like aliens and time travelers and psychics and stuff like okay, that. Like okay. she wants fantasy world, you know, but she lives in a boring normal world. Um, and there's this guy who's very boring and wants to stay boring. And she basically uh, shanghais him into joining this like paranormal investigations club with her. Uh, and he later finds out that the other members of that club are an alien, a time traveler, and a psychic. And they cannot reveal themselves to Haruhi because Haruhi is actually God and she doesn't realize it. And if Haruhi gets bored enough with the real world or like if something shakes her up too much, she could erase everything. And so it's them trying to keep her entertained, but only so much. Um, and that's the that's the show. It's very interesting. <laughs> Anime is so weird because that sounds like that could be that could be like a fucking like shitty BBC show. <laughs> 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 it sounds like a, <laughs> I, it's oh man. And it's anime is so weird because I'm like I I've, I've watched anime most of my life. And I go through phases where I don't watch it, or I'm like, kind of like a lapsed fan. So sometimes like I always feel like with these things, I'm like I'm, I I watch like one or two anime series a year. <laughs> so when I see all these other ones, I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. this? <laughs> like this one was this one this anime was like huge in like 2008 2009. Oh. Like it was it had people in a headlock. It was crazy, and then all of a sudden it just. There was this, there was like a big scandal, a sex scandal that happened with the, the voice actress of the main <laughs> character, and that show disappeared off the fucking planet. It's like that wow. Yakuza voice actor who got caught with cocaine and he just doesn't exist anymore. Like that kind of thing. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Take that real serious. 
Like, yeah, well, because that's the thing is like, aren't their voice actors like held to like a really high like personal standard? Yeah, or and, just like, their actors in general. Yeah, uh, and like especially with there's certain like anime voice actors and uh, mostly actresses I think who like you know they kind of go on to like they're not just voice actors they're like singers and they're models and they mm-hmm. do like all these other things like idols in every way and like people just get way too obsessed with them. Like, because when, when people were talking about, Aya Hirano was was the, the, the voice actress's name. Like, when, when people were talking about the sex scandal, it wasn't like, you know, she wasn't, she didn't assault anybody or anything like that. She was just involved in an affair and stuff. And people talked about it like it was a personal offense, you know? Like, how could she do this to me? How could yeah. she fuck some guy that's not me? You know? Like, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, like, yeah. It's a very, it's a very strange situation. Damn. Yeah. That's wild. Well, you know, I can't wait for people to get that into us, though, because we need the fan base. Yeah, I need absolutely. the money. <laughs> I've been, like, job hunting for, like, pretty hardcore since I graduated, so, mm-hmm. like, five months now. Fuck job hunting. I was about oh, yeah. to say, do you have anything left of a soul? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. You're... I, like, LinkedIn stresses me out now. Like, oh, that yeah. boring-ass website, I log into it, and I'm like... And, like, my heart rate goes up a little bit. (laughs) Job hunting. I'm currently thinking about trying to find a new job, so I've started to, like, apply to stuff. But, like, it's, like, writing a cover letter is the most, like, dehumanized. You feel, like, more more like shit than you ever have in your entire life. And being like, this is why I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) And you're like, fuck this. Or the worst thing is when you apply to a website, like, that has a resume thing. They made you upload your resume, but then you have to... Fill it all out again in yeah. like the tabs, and you're like, "Why are you, you have it? I gave it's it to right you. there." Yeah, it, like whatever AI I put it into also like fucked up all the formatting. Yeah. So it's like it's taking like the skills I have from one job and putting them under another. So you have to like rearrange. It's like I just let me type it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, technology was supposed to make this easier. I absolutely did not. I just straight up don't get it. Like, why can't I just go to a place, give them a resume, and like have them just hang on to it or decide if they want to interview yeah. me or whatever. Like, why do I have to, like, jump through a thousand hoops? Like, nothing about this process is better. Yeah. No. no it's, yeah. yeah. It's it's terrible. It's shitty. And then, like... <laughs> and it's, the it's like, the worst... It's like, you know, and there's, like, a hundred people doing the exact same thing you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, wow, this is great. I yeah. love competing with my fellow human to do that. <laughs> Well, like, especially the cover letter too thing, too, is, like, it sucks that that's just something that everyone can kind of relate to. Like, no, there's nobody out there who's like, oh, I'm fine with cover letters. Like, it sucks. Yeah, it's... Who wants these? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, God. It's... No, they're the worst. Like, I'm, I'm making myself apply to at least one job a week right now, and... It's already, like, just doing one is a fucking torture. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> like, even when I have a job, it's just, like, finding a job feels like another job on mm-hmm. top of it, and yeah. it sucks. I mean, it really is, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you can put a lot of time into, like, especially if it's a job that sounds cool and that you would like. It's like, okay, well, I'll put more effort into my resume, and I'll put more effort into my cover letter for this one. Mm-hmm. And you put all that time into it, and then you don't get anything out of it. It's like playing the lottery. Yeah, no, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> at least with the lottery, I get, like, an instant fucking result. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah, you know, that's like, at least I get the validation that I didn't get it, like, in, like, oh, I look at this, and then it didn't get it. Or I scratch something off and said no. With jobs, it's like, you just send stuff, not hear anything for two weeks, and you're like, cool, I guess. Not even, like, a thank you, we got your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Have you yeah. guys ever had, like, a... a hiring like an employer reach out to you like years after you applied there no yeah. once i got i got a i got an email back from uh i think it was target uh <laughs> last year i applied to them i think in 2011 wow. or something like that like i was job like that was back when i was you know in college job hunting and now they reach out i was like hey still interested hey <laughs> <laughs> you know Damn near a decade later. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, I'll just quit my job. Sure, why not? Love Target. Now it seems like the right time to get into Target, I too. think so. Yeah. I think so. Getting's yeah. good. Yeah. Right, right, right before the holidays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Precisely, yeah. It might be a seasonal job. I don't fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> they call you back ten years later and be like, you want this seasonal? <laughs> Every 10 years, Target calls you about seasonal job. That'd be so good. Happy 40th birthday. You interested yet? Yeah, they don't stop even though you said no. If 
by the time 50 or 60 comes around, I'm like, all right, you wore me down. One right. Sure. <laughs> no, like, to- well, it is funny now with, like, especially our generation now, because I don't feel like retirement's, like, a feasible, like, going to be, no one we know is going to ever going to be able to retire. <laughs> yes. That's, that's not a thing. So I often think, like, what am I going to do when I'm 70? I'm like, oh, we all work at, like, a Costco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <you> yeah. <laughs> just, like, Cut. <laughs> I think about, like, all, like, I'm like, what's, like, the least minimal job that I don't have to give a shit about when I'm, like, because <laughs> I'm still going to have to work, I'm, like, because I doubt I'm going to own a home. <laughs> yeah. I'll be, like, a 70-year-old man who's, like, renting from, like, a 30-year-old punk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Purposely <laughs> breaks shit in my house so he has to fix it. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to find out what gas station gets robbed the least and then work there. <laughs> yeah, like, I... I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't mind being, like, some kind of greeter or something. Like, oh, yeah. I just, I hate that that's the retirement plan. It's like, what kind of job can I just kind of sit there and people will be kind of nice to me because I'm old? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I, I, I went to Universal Studios a couple weeks ago, which was crazy in the, well, it was nice that, like, and we went to show the vaccination, and then also, it's the only place I've ever been during this whole fucking pandemic where people will run up to you if you wear your mask, like, up under your nose and yell at you to put it back on. Hell yeah. And it was all, like, old people doing it, <laughs> which was, like, the weirdest thing, because I guess no one to be like, fuck you, old man, fuck you, old lady. <laughs> and, and I was just like, well, that's pretty cool. That's smart, yeah. Because yeah. no one will get mad at them. You feel bad when you get scolded by an old person. Exactly. Also, like, being racist or something. But, yeah. like, otherwise, yeah, it's like, oh, my grandma just yelled at me. Yeah. God, geez, I guess I did fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, I shit. hate that where, like... Like, don't get me wrong, I don't wear my mask outside all that often mm-hmm. when I'm just walking around, but, like, I still hate that we can't get people to wear, like, masks for, like, just just anything. Mm-hmm. Like, how are we ever going to do anything as a society? Yeah. <laughs> I was at the I was at the DMV several months ago, and, like, there was a guy who kept pulling his mask down below his nose, and the lady, one of the ladies behind the... the counter every time he did it so sir can you pull your can you pull your mask sir and like she'll she keep yelling at him until he did it and he'd do it and then like two minutes later he'd like look at her and then pull it back down and then she noticed another two minutes later and they just did that oh back and forth for an hour while i waited there how good, it was incredible how good do you think their sex was <laughs> <laughs> fucking mind-blowing i bet yeah. well i was just thinking of like that guy like he's like this is my moment of patriotism. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the same way that my grandfather fought in D-Day, I'm pulling my mask down a little bit. <laughs> the DMV freedom fighter, yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is my DMV day. <laughs> That's good. Oh, no. <laughs> Wonderful. So, before we get into anything, can, can I just use this soapbox of a platform to talk about how frustrated I am with Funimation yeah, and the please. goddamn streaming service. <laughs> Bakri and I are going to do an episode on uh, Attack on Titan. Like, mm-hmm. the whole finale. The whole the whole show at some point. And so I watched seasons two and three. Every episode, I had to change the thing from English, or from Portuguese to English. <laughs> Every single episode. <laughs> And it would it would take like ten seconds because it'd have to reload the whole thing. We tried to watch Serial Experiment Lane, like the subtitles were like going off the screen. Like <laughs> at a certain point, we got this Japanese track going, but then like the subtitles were in Portuguese again. <laughs> I have all my settings set to like English. Like it, sh- I shouldn't be having these Portuguese problems. <laughs> it was literally only during. Japanese with English subtitles. The subtitles would just move all the way to the left of the screen. Yeah. Well, we had, we had to watch like the last six minutes of an episode in English, and then the subtitles are still on, but they were dead in the center. Yeah. The they same set of subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know why this shitty happened. And the yeah. subtitles didn't even match up with the dub either. Like, it's yeah. the same ideas, but like different wording entirely. It's like, yeah. I I have no idea what's going on with it. Like, it's it's like functional enough that you can almost get the stuff that you want but Mm -hmm. then like paranoia agent like the subtitles i mean okay so the subtitles were off part of it is we have an old chromecast yeah so okay but then i i go to watch it with uh my girlfriend and episode four just the japanese track is the english track (laughs) and it's that for like every episode after episode four you don't remember that bold choice by satoshi (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to make one episode just fully in English, <laughs> just like we are. I think I have had it with these Japanese voice actors. It's English here on out. 
They did that in uh, Devil May Cry. It was, they had recorded the original voice track was in English because he didn't want the the dialogue to distract the Japanese players for some reason. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. I, I could that explained a lot about that kid. Yeah, yeah, like the I should have filled your dark soul with light line. It's like, well, yeah, the guy who's directing this voice acting probably doesn't speak English very well. So like, yeah, sure, break it going. That sounded passionate. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> sounded like you felt it. I, I have a question for you though regarding yeah. the how frustrating some of these like anime streaming apps are do you wish though it was back in the days of like you had to go to like a sun coast video to buy your anime <laughs> next to some porn yeah or, or do you have to go to a weird like masonic hall to tape trade with <laughs> <laughs> no exactly the one you're talking about yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah that's, that's, that's why i fucking got anime as a kid yeah and that's why it made me feel like a sicko as a kid. <laughs> Is that, yeah, you had to go to a mall yeah. and go into a store that the anime was actually the porn for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, I would have to go talk to some fucking weirdo who was, like, a creep and then be like, give me a tape. <laughs> <laughs> or give me this CDR that you've burned with some <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It is better, right? It's yeah. just like, well, but it's like, it is kind of back in... It does kind of feel like how it how it felt back in the day, where it's like when you found an anime or something, like you just kind of found whatever it was, right? Like mm-hmm. you you didn't get to like have all these options, and that's how it feels with Funimation. It's just worse because it it looks like you have options, but it's not that. It's mm-hmm. like you come home and you think you have Cowboy Bebop, and it's you know some other like it, public domain Korean <laughs> space anime. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would say I'll take this over the the yeah the Sun Coast like VHS and DVD days, but I would take like 2008 2009 like the time where like Crunchyroll was still a pirate site back then and like only really had Naruto and Bleach and a couple K dramas I think it used to be a pirate site yeah it was a it was a pirate site before I went legit yeah <laughs> wait wow the, that... it was a go go anime type thing back then whoa in the day. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, like, most of the anime you would watch was, like, on YouTube in, like, several parts in 240p with those awful, like, yellow subtitles. And if it wasn't on YouTube, you'd have to track it down somewhere else. And, like, like I wa- the first time I watched The Melancholy of Haruki Season Mia, it was on a website that was entirely, I think, in Arabic. And for some reason it had the, the, the episodes... <laughs> with English subtitles and Japanese audio, but it was, like, a really bad video player, and, like, the theme song has a bunch of glitter effects, and the whole thing would just have a heart attack every time, you know, like... And when... Even though that's less convenient in every way, like, it felt like you earned something when you got to it. Yeah. Dealing with Funimation or Crunchyroll just feels like it's it's you just being fucked over by these people because you gave them money. You know? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's not some Indiana Jones trek to find the one thing you want to watch. It's like, well, fuck, I'm trying to watch Paranoia Agent, and mm-hmm. this, you know, glitches all over its time. Yeah. Well, it, it's frustrating, too, because it's like, you have the act, like, we, I am paying for just about every anime service that I can. I have Shonen Jump. I have Crunchyroll. I have Funimation. I, like, I, I, I can't pay for more anime outside of just buying it. Yeah, you can. You can sign up for High Dive. Oh, excuse, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, and I, I could do ma- manga move or whatever. You could send but, uh, you could send retro crush money. I, I know it's I, free, I, but you I should be pay, doing. They, yeah, they probably have a PayPal link somewhere. Irregardlessly, <laughs> um, I I give you know I'm I'm paying for these things and like it feels like anything that's like pre 2012. It's just like so hard to like find the version of it that I want. Oh yeah. You know? <laughs> I actually learned how to torrent stuff in like 2007 because of like I wanted to watch One Piece and in like giant batches and they had like this I forget what the fan sub site was but they had it in batches of like 20 episodes and I was like I'm gonna learn how to do this and that's how maybe figure out how to steal things efficiently with yeah. anime. I think I did the same thing but for like Excel Saga or something like something absolutely not worth learning to, to torrent. <laughs> Well, like when uh, when we do the the hyper violent, hyper sexy anime night, which is like a, this thing where I edit together a bunch of just violent anime and things like that. Uh, like I still have to jump through hoops to find like old eighties stuff. Like nobody has Legend of the Overfiend on their uh, streaming service. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, like those old like I do. Like, wa- watching Serial Experiments Lane and, like, looking at, like, old anime and whatnot today, it's like, I wish somebody had, like, all those, like, just gross OVAs somewhere. Yeah. Like, Retro Crush has some, but not, I mean, I don't, again, I don't think I did, I had to go, like, some, I had to go to, like, a weird 
German site or something that I was like, this is definitely going to give me a virus. <laughs> and it had it. I, I was able to get it. There so. you go. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um. Well, anything else? Um, anything else on anybody's mind? I, I'm off my soapbox now. Funimation, get your shit together. Uh, I've been trying to watch... Or I've been watching uh, The Ranking of Kings on Funimation... And Funimation's being shitty, but not as shitty. It just, <laughs> it, it's, it's found the perfect va- balance, because I'm watching it on, in a browser, like, on my computer, and it's found the perfect amount of, like, it found exactly how much it can freeze to the point where I won't stop and find another place to watch it, but I'll be very upset about it. <laughs> it's like, if I freeze, I can freeze up to 11 times per episode, and Bakri won't turn it off. And that's what it does. Wow. And, but I do it because ranking of, it's, it's a really good anime, you guys should watch it. It's like, that's the one. That's the one about the the blind deaf boy king. He's he's deaf and mute. He can see. Deaf and mute. Okay. Yeah. Um. But he's a he's a little get prince, his... and he's gonna be the king one day. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Get get his senses right. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Check his privilege. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah. yeah. It's it's really good. Very heartfelt. So, yeah. It looks nice. cute. Yeah. yeah. I'm like way off from like any kind of modern. I haven't had like one of those like anime nights where like you just watch all the new stuff. Like oh. I haven't done that. Since COVID, I think. Uh, I think I no, I think I did it one time. I yeah, used to was, do those all the time. It was the same season. It was the season with um, God of High School. We watched yeah. God of High School on Discord, mm-hmm. um, and and others. Yeah, it's the only one I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we watched that, and we watched the weird like we watched like two veterinary monster girl ones oh, or something. Yeah. yeah, it was the Dark oh, it was the one with the centaur, and she like. They have this like really uncomfortable thing where he puts the 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 hooks the, 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 the shoes the horseshoes horseshoes yeah but yeah. she's like feeling some sort of sexual gratification from it it's really yeah learn something about horses every day I guess so yeah. <laughs> it's very strange yeah no I'm way like Tim will tell me like oh have you watched like this show and actually I think he's finally stopped asking me if I'm watching new anime <laughs> <laughs> take it back. <laughs> um is it it lame is is it anime time is it time to talk about serial experiments lame time to start surfing the web yeah oh dude no it's all get wired yeah it's time to get on the wired (laughs) wired. we're gonna be elite hacksaws (laughs) everyone opened their cans you guys remember don't worry about it too much (laughs) (laughs) what what did you say say you guys remember goatsy oh (laughs) <laughs> That's what Serial Experience Lady was missing. It was her saying goat seat. It was, so, so this is nice idea. <laughs> Before we get into it, goat seat's a good reminder. Um, trigger warning for this part of the show. Oh, nice. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. What a segue. <laughs> what a segue. Um, like, legitimately, like, we're going to cover what? There's there's suicide, there's death, there's violence. There's a mass shooting. Yeah, there's yeah. a shooting at a, a, uh, at a public place. So, uh, yeah. So, if any of those are sensitive topics for you, this is probably... you. We've had our fun. It's, you know, we'll see you in the yeah, next one. And there's no that. problems there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just make sure to like and subscribe. Um, <laughs> so, with that kind of out of the way there... Um, yeah, so we watched the first six episodes of Serial Experiment Lane. Mm-hmm. Let's start, Brendan. Just kind of, what, what's your overall feelings about the show? Well, okay. So initially, I, I did buy the DVD of the, the first volume of this at a Suncoast in like 2001 <laughs> or two. You're on it. <laughs> um, I didn't remember liking it that much then, but I could totally understand why. It's very, it's very slow burn, a lot more atmosphere, like, dialogue isn't really as important as, like, setting a mood, and I did really like the mood, I just think it might have taken a bit too long to get there, but I feel like where we got at the end of the six episodes is, things are moving faster and in a way that is actually interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. interesting now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, I feel much the same, like, I, I was really into... Uh, I bounced off at the first couple times I tried, but I got really into uh, Bakemonogatari for much the same reason. It's just really, really pretty scenes of people talking about shit I don't understand. Um, <laughs> and, like, that's great. I just, like, you know, you can zone out to it and I'll pick up some plot points here and there. 
Uh, and yeah, this is much the same. Like, I think this anime is gorgeous. Like, it holds yeah. up spectacularly, and it's a contemporary of Sonic Adventure One, which is a great <laughs> year. Um, <laughs> need to get the Sonic reference in somewhere. Um, yeah, no, it's, I I don't know where this is going. I, I honestly don't understand where we are right now. One hundred percent. She's a she's an internet Jesus, uh, and that's cool. Yeah, there's there's a lot to really unpack from like what is happening. It's like yeah. it's like. Every episode feels long because they feel really dense with, like, everything that's happening. Because it's yeah. all happening, like, really slow, but it's also, like, really kind of important yeah. what's happening. Um, but, yeah, vis- like, talking about the visuals, like, that's oh. this is such a good-looking show. Oh, yeah. yeah. This this actually, when I was watching this, made me realize I have such, like, a soft spot for those, like, animes of, like, the mid to late 90s of, like, these, like... Japanese cityscapes with like minimalism and like yeah. bright lighting and I'm like I have like and sometimes it's weird because sometimes it feels like a cost cutting measure but here if it's like it feels like it's a cost cutting measure but it's also stylistically fits so well in with what they're trying to do totally yeah <laughs> yeah because because there's like they're going for this like disconnection or like blurred lines between like the internet and mm. reality and you have lane who's not super connected to reality and so when she walks outside like the 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 outside is all super contrasty mm-hmm. where it's like the shadows are pitch black and everything else is just kind of white mm-hmm. um and it looks so good yeah yeah it just i really it's very easy just to look at it and be like okay i i, I just it's yeah it's very easy just to like lose yourself in the image and watch it and even though it is dense i feel like it's so visually stimulating that there's enough there even if like when it slows down or like kind of just relies on mood there's enough to kind of keep you going just looking at it totally totally yeah yeah and all the shots i i like the way that they're they're framed like they do this like fisheye lens kind of thing that like kind of like makes people's facial features look really weird and i really mm. like how that uh like when somebody's having like a weird mental issue, it's like, all right, let's let we we break out the fisheye lens and really like sell that yeah, emotion. Yeah, stick the camera right there on their forehead. And it's like, I just like up the like, the Shinji pose, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, better than trying to pantomime it to a microphone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing I really love, like just kind of looking at, uh, not even necessarily anime, just like animation of like you know older technology or just technology in general, you know, like. Mm-hmm seeing those kind of like yellowing white computers and stuff like that and all the cables everywhere and then also just like sci-fi tech sprawls like what what she has going on in the sixth episode um and i hope i'm gonna continue watching this and i hope that there's more of that because i think they do a really good job making that look interesting yeah it's just a thing i really enjoy looking at i guess yeah because it's it's kind of like it's such an interesting era of anime where that like like weird ova like gross mecha style is like making its way kind of mainstream and like people are starting to explore darker ideas and anime and like more getting a little bit more great and like that that computer look she has in that sixth episode is very like that could have been in like an 80s ova totally oh yeah Yeah. totally it was very like it was very like ghost in the shell like this is like it cuts to like the villain inside his like little like like hobble like doing some cyber crime shit <laughs> very much reminded me of that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah it's it, it and it also like it, it feels a lot like evangelion which had come out like a couple years ahead but mm-hmm. a couple years before that so uh i think cowboy bebop was probably around the same time so yeah, yeah that sounds right yeah, yeah. So it's just, just like a crazy time for anime. Mm-hmm. And I guess, like, just... We haven't really talked about what the plot is, because it's kind of hard to discern. <laughs> but essentially, Lane, this school-age girl, one of her classmates uh, commits suicide. And then all these... She kind of comes wrapped up in investigating it, because it's tied to the internet, which is called The Wired in this. Yeah. Yes. And she slowly gets involved in this world and the lines between, like, reality, like, the wired world and, like, her real world start blurring. And then there's, like, a hidden, there might be some, like, hidden group manipulating things behind the scenes and people are just going crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's kind of interesting because it comes out, like, right as, like, the internet's starting to become big, but not where it becomes, like, the thing that we know it today. So it's still kind of, like, 
like there's there's a lot of like it's called the wired yeah. and whatnot. Like you could have just called it the internet, but yeah. like well, well, that makes it sound different and kind of exotic. Like you have to inter you have like an interface you interact with. It's mm-hmm. not like AOL, but instead it's like an AI kind of thing. Yeah, and it is kind of funny because you could tell maybe the writer doesn't really understand what the internet is is yeah. <laughs> because all he all Lane does basically for the first. I want to say five episodes is just look at an eyeball that has like this is your voice box this is your email yeah she's yeah. just watching her fucking outlook just waiting for a message <laughs> it's like and she builds this like impressive rig as she gets more insane and you're like this is all just to answer emails yeah. <laughs> the most advanced form of technology email <laughs> well so like in that first episode so there's there's the girl I think her name's uh, Chisa or Chisu yeah, or something Chisa, yeah Chisa yeah um she she kills herself, and then not long after, Lane gets like an email from her that basically says like, "I'm I'm in the computer, uh, you know God God is in here or something." Yeah, it's like I shed my mortal body and now I'm alive in the computer and I've met God. Yeah, and I feel like everyone in the school kind of got this spam email too, but yeah. Lane's the only one who kind of like latched onto it. Mm-hmm. And then she kind of, that's like her first exposure and like, oh, maybe I should start investigating the web, and then. Yeah, then just shit starts getting crazier, I guess, like, there's... Okay. So, (laughs) we have to talk about there's a child's dance club in this world that also has adults. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's an all-ages nightclub where they'd sell drugs and have drinks and and people are making out and grinding on each other, but it's okay because kids are in here. I think this is going to be an episode where we're going to jump around a bunch because, like, I I feel like going episode by episode, we're going to, like... Just go insane because yeah. How do we not talk about the weird all ages drug nightclub? No, I Siberia, a- Siberia <laughs> with a C Y. Yeah, it's C- <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten. But, oh, wonderful! It's That's so it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Siberia Cafe and Club or Bar or whatever it was. Um, what was I going to say? I had a thought very recently that maybe maybe Siberia was supposed to be like synecdoche for 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 Lane. Mm. being online and like kind of socializing with all these strangers and stuff like and that was why because there's people who recognize lane as a different person than she recognizes herself to be like there's Mm -hmm. the there's the quiet normal lane and then there's the quote-unquote wild lane and so i was like okay maybe she takes on a different personality on the in the wired and this is like us seeing a like a realization of that but then the guy shoots the nightclub up, and, and she actually goes there instead of going online because her friends wanted her to go, so that doesn't hold up, or maybe it does. I don't fucking know. The show's confusing. It, it, it's kind of, like, it seems like you're both right and wrong. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, like, yeah, there is the guy who kills the people at the club, but then also, like, she sends people, like, emails there, and they answer them there. Yeah. There's, but that, I don't know, that, I think that might be a different thing. And it, like, it would also kind of make sense why it's, like, a bunch of, you know, kids and, and adults, like, kind of in the same space, you know? It's mm-hmm. like, we're on Twitter, and, like, people get in arguments with 14-year-olds all the time, and yeah. like, they don't realize <laughs> at the moment that they're arguing with a 14-year-old, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's no. very strange. But, so she gets there, and because she also... Like Baki was saying, like, yeah, she's, like, might have been there the night before someone that looks like her. So then this crazy guy. Also, this show does one of my favorite things in science fiction things. There's a made-up drug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a techno drug. A it's techno drug. Accelera. <laughs> Accelera, yep. Yeah. Accelera, which is a thing that you, a little, like, nanobite thing that you eat and it, like, manipul- it, like manipulates your sense of time and slows it down. And when they're doing this, like, it, there's so many info dumps in this show where just a voice <laughs> explains to you something over, like, an image. I don't mind that at all. That's like that's a negative thing. No, it, it's, it, yeah. But it's, it's just kind of funny because then, like, they're like, oh, this you take the drug and it slows down your sense of time and then it dissolves in your system in 24 hours. But we don't know anything else past that. And you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's it's so weird, too, because we're like... I love how, like, our, our madness over this episode, like, when they reveal Siberia unfolded where it's like, are they doing a drug deal? Oh, my God, they're doing a drug deal for, like, a cyber drug. Oh, my God. And then all of a sudden the kids are like, hey, let's go to the club. Like, why are you going to the cyber (laughs) drug club, children? (laughs) And, like, there are not just, like, the, the, like, I guess, like, high school girls. Like, okay, maybe high school girls would try to sneak into a club. Sure. Sure. But then there's, like, actual children. Yeah, there's, like, Like middle schoolers. Yeah, like. Those are middle school children. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I was stretching with that. Yeah, Yeah, because, again, 
And then, yeah, but there's, like, elementary school kids there who, like, are just, like, literally feet up on the table. You're like, what the fuck are these kids doing in this club? (laughs) But, so the mystery deepens at Siberia, too, because Lane encounters the guy who took the drug, and he he shoots up the club. And then it's, like, this real, actually, really tense moment, too, where you're kind of freaked out and don't know what's going to happen. Lane freezes up, and all her friends she goes there with just kind of run away, and she's like, I'm just going to stay here. Yeah. Well, and it's it's on the back of, like, she's gotten an email about the, the girl who killed herself in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then there's, like, I'm not sure if it was real or if it was symbolism, but, like, there's an accident on the train oh, while they're yeah. in the first episode. And, like, you see, like, blood kind of come down from uh, her. And yeah. I don't know if that's her, like, thinking about the girl's death from earlier or if someone jumped in front of the train. Because there's all these, like after that there's like a girl who's like almost running into a train and stuff like that mm-hmm. so like it like when she sees the people get shot in the club and like her eyes go wide i'm like oh poor lane <laughs> <laughs> like she's just all around it really going through it yeah and then she tells the guy that what that we're all connected yeah the wired yeah and then he shoots himself yeah yeah and then yeah and then but she just goes hardcore for a second she yeah. like goes in like a fugue state and just starts like talking <laughs> <laughs> yeah well she does the thing in video games where like you you pass the final charisma check and the boss kills himself <laughs> uh it's possessed by cyber jesus for a moment and, you know. <laughs> and okay and this is the end of the second episode and this is where i noticed like the to be continued thing is like this white and like this red white and blue thing mm-hmm. you want to say yeah. yeah. And blah, blah, blah. Are... What, what better way to celebrate a mastery than show <laughs> our colors? <laughs> just... Japan knew it straight ahead. Yeah, know. yeah. Well, because it's weird because it's like, yeah, it's 2B continued, but then it's capital B and then, you know, the letter E. Um, and the E is red and the... the uh, the the B is blue and the E is red. I can't, I can't remember. I was like, why? I was like, I spent the whole episode being like, okay, what's going to be the... The B that stands out. I'm like, oh, but serial experiment lane. There's no B in that. I don't know. There's a there's a couple of E's. There's a couple of E's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, okay, so going back to the guy at the club, right? Yeah. Uh, one thing I also really liked is, so he has like a laser pointer on his gun. Yes. Oh, and yeah. I love how the the cyberpunk dudes that mm. show up la- later have laser pointers on their heads. So, like, there's this, like, motif of, like, threatening lasers. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's the show. futuristic as fuck. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> 1998. Lasers are scary, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, the writer just got a laser pointer for the first time. He's like, this is, this is terrifying. <laughs> mm, I could drive cats insane with this. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, there there is obviously kind of an unreliable narrator situation going on here. Maybe Lane's a cat. Oh, mm. that's why she was drawn. She couldn't run away. Yeah. She was like, "But I need to catch it." Exactly. Um, I guess we should also touch on Lane's dad then too. Well, oh, I, sure. or I guess her family in general. Yeah, yeah. Her family's all kind of nuts. Yeah, yes. she has like a very quiet, almost like non-existent mom who's just kind of there. Yeah, like her mom kind of like ignores her to like almost like a uh like almost like an abusive kind of like she seems ignoring. abusive yeah, yeah. The only, she just pipes up to say something like kind of rude and dismissive once in a while yeah like, that's it that's and, their whole relationship yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then her sister seems like more like the out she has an older sister who seems like more like the outgoing type like mm-hmm. person who kind of like is, doesn't really understand lane's qu- like a quiet person but doesn't really get it Mm-hmm. Yeah, she also seems like the least technology driven mm-hmm. between like Lane and her dad. Yeah. So, because um, yeah, but like there's a, there's a dynamic between all of them where like they're all they'll all talk to each other for like a sentence, and then just go their own separate yes. ways. Yeah. You know, like there's a part like I think having not seen more than these six episodes, I think the dad has something going on where he's like, I'm going to have Lane turn into a cyber Jesus or some, you know, some kind of Evangelion shenanigans. Oh, yeah, but, totally. Oh, wait, like, do you think her dad is behind it? Like, he's oh, yeah. trying to make her do this? Well, oh, yeah. Oh. I think, I think this is, this is like, Jeez. maybe this is maybe in like the fourth or fifth episode, but at one point you could tell like, he like sees her with her computer tower kind of mass and like the water dripping and stuff and like, 
kind of just looks at him and goes back downstairs. And then it cuts to him sitting down next to his wife. And his, his wife's like, did you talk to her? And he's like, yeah, I did. Even though he didn't say anything or yeah. do anything. It's just like, oh, so he, he definitely is up to some shit. Yeah. yeah okay. there, there's also, so there's like this, uh, they don't, and I, no, they explain what it does. I didn't understand what it does. <laughs> there's like the psyche chip or whatever yes. that lets you like better experience the wired. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, that... Like, she shows, like, he's like, hey, Lane, what are you doing? He's like, hey, Dad, check it, what's this? And he's like, I don't know. And then just leaves instantly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that's either he's hiding something or that's also just kind of their family dynamic, you know? Yeah. Like, I could very easily be wrong about Lane's dad being the the prophet of all of this. Well, 1998, maybe he was, like, a child and, like, the late 70s early 80s maybe he's just like a latchkey kid he's like i will continue this style of parenting maybe this, <laughs> maybe he's trying to bring about y2k he's oh, trying to oh shut my everything God. down yeah. figured it out the he real that, apocalypse he knew that butt ugly martians was gonna happen and he had to stop it. <laughs> oh wow that's a shot i have thought about <laughs> whoa, whoa. oh wow, wow oh man i get that theme song stuck in my head we like weekly are the martians the butt ugly martians. martians wow yeah we don't want to go to war i just want to hover for anyway <laughs> <laughs> it's the most like bockery moment of course <laughs> um, what are we talking about? Yeah, okay. No, like now family relations. Yeah. <laughs> now, that, now that you've now that you've pointed that out, yeah, there, I can definitely see him doing like a Gendo type of situation. Yeah, he, he literally gets the glasses flash. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. got the glasses flash. Yeah. yeah, he's got the yeah. He does the Gendo glasses flash a lot. Yeah. It actually like he's like progressing. He started like with like a quarter of a glasses. That like he, now we know he's full Gendo. It's like a loading bar. But yeah, there's also there's also the sister, Lane's sister, who I, I didn't, never caught her name. I didn't either. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, me neither. She has such a good like fifth episode where like she's like I, that one like she keeps running into these things that say like fulfill the prophecy, fulfill yeah. the prophecy. And she's running around, she's getting all freaked out by everything, mm-hmm. and at first she th- feels like she has a good grasp on reality. Goes off the web. And I love how that episode ends, where like she walks into the house after freaking out sees herself yeah and is like oh my god what's happening and then the version that we've been with this entire episode apparently isn't real or like that's like some kind of cyber ghost or something yeah or like yeah just disappears walks off and then lane kind of looks over and sees like a cyber there's like these weird like pixelated cyber ghost people thing yeah. that you don't really tell but she sees the remnants of it but you can't make it any facial features and you're just kind of like oh shit is this the sister is this yeah has she been replaced we don't know because there's also like this very like yeah the, lane also has these like men in black literally like guys watching her with their weird little laser headsets yeah so there's just some like g-men governmental conspiracy thing feel like it's happening too right and she breaks one at one point she says she says like go away or something and one of their like laser pointer goggle things like breaks yeah she has like a full-on like psychic moment yeah (laughs) yeah yeah there's there's a very akira moment totally yeah um yeah because there's something there's something going on with the cyber ghosts that lane can see and talking about the the g-men who are i think they're 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 actually called knights or something um talking about them there's a part in episode i think four where the sister's like who the fuck are you guys and they're like we're not here. Yes. You don't see us. And that's where, like, after that, she has her yeah. whole, oh. oh, my God, what's real? So mm-hmm. these guys and their laser pointer glasses have some kind of something mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't put that together. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, I I might be connecting things that aren't connected. Yeah. But, but, okay, I guess now that we're kind of talking more broadly, too, you brought this up during the, when we were actually watching it, but I, I feel like this is very true. It, it does feel very, like, perfect blue Yeah. yeah. Like perfect blue came out, I think we said, like, we found out the year before or something. Like, something like that. The yeah, year yeah, or two yeah. before. So it, it, it feels like perfect blue, but you're not in the role of, like, uh, the main person. It feels like you're in the role of, like, the me mania person, like the fat hacker guy. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like you're, like you're doing for, like, his point of view, which feels very strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and because it's it's very like it, but it's like more jarring than Perfect Blue because Perfect Blue has those like cuts where not that I can think of one off the top of my head, but basically like somebody will be falling and then like 
they're falling, and then like something goes up in front of the camera, and then they're in a different area. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Lane just like hard cuts from like I'm walking around having a good time. Hard cut to I'm in my computer room. Oh like, yeah. Like now I'm over here. Now this is happening. Now I'm talking to this person, but I'm really friendly about it. Like it just like it is jarring. Yeah. She starts making a lot of changes in the it was episode six too. So she starts wearing like makeup, and and you were talking about like she's. A lot more aut- autonomous, maybe isn't the right word. She has a lot more agency. Yeah, like, she's yeah. a lot more act. She's like, the first five episodes, she's kind of passive. Yeah, she's like passively investigating and just kind of like things happen to her. But by the sixth episode, she seems very much like I'm gonna figure out what the fuck these knights are doing and find it. There's also like a weird killer game. Was it like Fan Go- Fan uh, Fan Phantasma? Phantasma that just looks like yeah. Minecraft. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and even before that, like she starts the the very first episode, like episodes one and two, I guess, like she's a lot more like reserved and withdrawn and stuff. And then like as she gets deeper and deeper into this, like even with the the her friends at school and stuff like that, she's a lot more outgoing and like she's willing to like go out and hang out with them more and stuff like that. Like as though her getting into the internet is like you know kind of helping her be a little more extroverted and come out of her shell a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. Like, well- yeah, it, it, it everything else makes me think that maybe the writer is like you know kind of scared of technology in the future and stuff like that, and like internet in general, like what's that gonna what that's gonna cost us. But then also like it's all it, it seems like it's got kind of a positive effect on Lane. Yeah, that that's the weird thing. I can't tell if it's intentional or not. Yeah, <laughs> like I can't tell if the guy is just trying to be like she's getting more weird, but it's also it seems like she's becoming more like comfortable in her own skin around people yeah. but so it's, it's weird <laughs> yeah well i think she's she's more comfortable but there's also and i i don't know for sure but there's also like almost like like she's hanging out with her friends but that might have just kind of been a coincidental like she's also like trying to investigate what's going on mm-hmm. and like look around because the second she gets back there isn't like a that was fun i'm gonna relax oh, yeah. or it's like it's just like it goes from like she's hanging out with her friends Hard cut. She's home. Throw off the jacket. Smudge off the lipstick. Yeah, that's time true. to do cyber investigation. Yeah, she like she yeah she takes off her costume. She's like it's like when she's hanging out in public. Like that's kind of her like avatar really. And then like her real self is like whenever oh. she's going into the whip. Yeah. <laughs> what if real life is the real internet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? It's a yeah. Simulation. <laughs> it is a simulation. Well, and there's there's also like some kind of thing with like. Uh, where she keeps saying like everyone's connected, yes. yeah, and and they're not in like a phone way, but like almost like in tel- telepathy, where it's mm-hmm. like I'm gonna tell you or I'm gonna ask you a question, you're gonna respond to me, but you're not gonna entirely know how you responded to me. But yeah. we are connected, yeah, now. yeah. Because in well, in the sixth episode too, she stumbles across like this old man dying on this beautiful like broken ruined veranda (laughs) who starts talking about like psychic kids and experiments and shit like that and now you're like okay maybe this is why she had psychic powers for a second now it's like even deeper into a conspiracy so it's just like yeah it's i i really like how all the elements are moving together quite like a bit and and again like i said this before but i totally see why i couldn't appreciate this when I was in like eighth grade, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> yeah, it is. It is such a, a like slow burn of a show, but like it's so dense too. In that, like, you have to pay attention to what's happening, but it's not terribly exciting. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know? <laughs> there are moments of, and also it's weird because yeah, we like I said, the episodes feel kind of long, but when they end, they feel like they just come out of nowhere. It's like this is the end. It says like to be continued. I'm like, oh, yeah. that, oh, that's it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It's it, it, it's a very odd feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I started feeling, especially towards the end, like every episode was just a little too long or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd be like, and that's the end of the episode. And then it would keep going. And it had that same feeling that I have when, like, a movie is, like, 110 minutes or mm-hmm. something as opposed mm-hmm. to, like, 90 minutes. It's like, it's just a little too long, mm-hmm. you know? No, totally. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I felt, like, about these episodes as they, they kind of went on. I could uh, see that. I, I like the pacing of it for the most part. I think the yeah. first episode, I was like, this is a little slow. And then by the time it was over, I was like, well, that wasn't so bad. And yeah. then, like, every episode, as it kind of unfolds, I got, like, you know, I thought the, the pacing was... Every episode felt faster to me. Yeah. Interesting. I do kind of think those first four episodes maybe could have been condensed to, like, two. Sure. I feel like maybe, because, like... I feel like the one at the club and the F at the club could have been its own thing kind of yeah. thing. And, like, I, I, I don't know. But, I, I mean, it's no fault. It's, like, I like the way it's rolling out, but I do wish it was 
a little tighter. And now it's like introducing all these other elements. Like there's like a creepy room she goes into and talks to like a doll and then maybe her dad too so it's like getting weirder and i'm like i don't know what the fuck i don't know if this is the past or the present and like there was some kind of like ceremonial mask she was talking to one time yeah Yeah. the 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 fucking floating mask from uh, crash bandicoot (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) aku aku yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) which one was the the, there was the uka uka and aku aku i forgot which one was the good one aku aku was the bad one i think I think Uka Uka was the bad one. Uka yeah, Uka I think that's the, the one, one. I think that's the one that Cortez has. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. Um, yeah, I didn't have a regular PlayStation, so I'm no help oh, here. Sure. Um, yeah, I I feel like episode five and six loved the whole pacing of everything. Yeah, like I remember being on like I was like we were like finishing up like episode three, and I'm like, are we only on episode three? Like, <laughs> no, we're on episode four or five, right? And like, not that I was like hating it, but I was just like. I feel like I'm going to be watching this show for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, it is it is just, like, I'm just, like, slogging through it. Um, but I'm more, I'm more, now that things are happening more, and, like, the intrigue is, is going, mm-hmm. I'm feeling it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sucker for those kind of, like, I want to, I'm trying to think of the best way. It's like, these, like psychodramatic i know there's a better way but like these like movies about people like questioning their sanity and like they are like even if they're bad i kind of like them because sure. like they take all these weird narrative shortcuts or like these weird things where things just like flip on a dime and i'm like okay i i, I like this yeah and but this one's doing it pretty well because i yeah I, I i like the budding atmosphere they're rolling out things it's not like a fucking like jj abrams thing where they just like there's a mystery thing in the middle they're like they just like they roll out things at a good pace and like they kind of answer them they kind of don't it feels all kind of it feels good it doesn't feel like there's like one be all answer that's going to solve everything it's just like this is this world and we'll slowly unfurl and peel back new layers which i kind of like as opposed to yeah just like the one central mystery yeah because yeah. like, it's, it's it's kind of moved past she's suicide entirely now and now i don't even know where it's going yeah, yeah. they haven't even talked about her recently have they Mm -mm. do they mention her past episode two or three I think like, oh, past three, definitely not. Yeah, yeah I think okay. three was the last one. That sounds right. Because uh, uh, her friend, like, I think Arisu, like, yeah. kind of brings it up a little bit, I think. like, Or maybe she just brings up that she's getting, like, weird spam emails. Mm-hmm. But... I honestly, I honestly thought Arisu is going to be a bit more central to the plot for some reason. Like, she, she seems like she's kind of poised to be, like, you know, one of the closer people to land, but then also... Uh, Weeb moment. Arisu is the Japanese transliteration of the name Alice. And oh. there's other references. Like, I think there's, like, a white rabbit icon on one of her screens. And she oh. mentions, like, a Cheshire Cat guy. So I'm like, okay, Alice in Wonderland references, sure. But, like, then Arisu's just kind of, like, there. She's just around. Well, this. yeah. I mean, I imagine she'll probably have her, like, episode, like, how her sister has an episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you okay. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's start like, yeah she's okay. the only other person in this show who seems to actually, like, be attuned to what Lane is going through. Like, she reacts to Lane, like, having difficulties, like, with, like, someone getting killed in front of her or, like, actually yeah. cares about what Lane is feeling and feels very much, like, poised to do that. So I, I, I do, I see... I see her becoming more of, like, bigger things in, like, the end of, like, Act 2. Sure. Like, and maybe even, like, becoming, like... Like, see, I think I know where this goes. Like, I don't know if, like, she becomes... I can see she becomes more of, like, the protagonist at a certain point, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe. As Lane gets, like, further gone. That makes sense. Yeah, because it's, like, yeah. Alice, so she has to go through the... She has to go through the hole to pull out something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh! oh. <laughs> she has, she's gonna have to go through the looking glass to pull out Lane. Yeah. yeah. No, that could definitely be, because it also seems like... She's the only person who's like, hey, what's happening is, like, weird. Yeah. yeah. You know, whereas everybody else in Wonderland is like, uh, oh, no, this is totally normal. Oh, yeah. You know? like, like, it's your not birthday or whatever, you know? Totally. After, and the, the, the shooting happens in episode two, and the episode three, they are just at school again, and everyone's reacting completely normal. And then Ari Su goes, guys, we all just witnessed, like, people die last night. <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? Yeah. She's, like, the only person, like, and we even were talking about this, like, why aren't they talking about this? And she's the only person that does this. Yeah. So I do feel like she's the only, like, really two feet on the ground person. <laughs> That's, yeah, very true. 
hundred percent. Yeah, but even then, like she's still like they find the the letter, and, and, and then she's just immediately like, <laughs> "Who sent you? The whose letter is that from?" Like, so <laughs> she goes right back <laughs> into <laughs> it pretty quick. I, I have another mother who's like very serious, but when, like Lane's love life comes up, she's like, "Never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's drop the murder suicide we saw." <laughs> <laughs> Who you fucking like? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when she gets that weird little chip box. <laughs> yeah. Who does she get that from again? It's a mystery it's letter. A mystery. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure I, know. I thought it was like a love letter. Yeah. So, little chip. Yeah. But it's weird because like I feel like we've discussed most of the things that happened in those six episodes, but it feels like there was so much more that did. It's it's very strange. Well, I'm sure like you know it's probably going to be episode seven or eight where the real villain cancel culture shows up. <laughs> so. Yeah, so let's let's diverge a little bit and kind of talk about because there's a few aspects to this show that we can talk to outside of the plot. Yeah. Um. So you brought this up, Bakri, mm-hmm. that the writer. Let's find this guy's name. Uh, Chiaki something. Chi- Chiaki J Konaka. Mm. He's got a middle I name. Sure right. It's I, everywhere I saw there was that J in there. Interesting. Yeah, I know. You never you never really see it. Yeah. So he wrote this show alongside what was it, Digimon Tamers? Digimon Tamers, yes. the third series after Adventure One and Adventure Two. Yeah, and so for the twentieth anniversary, there was a, a stage play like script reading where they. Uh, well, you, you what what happens in this script play? Uh, so they, yeah, so they they do a, a, a <laughs> script read play thing. Um, got the voice actors and actresses for it, and uh, they have to they have to fight a, a Digimon uh, or the the spirits of political correctness in the digital world. And uh, the the was it the ultimate attack of the bad guy? The bad guy has cancel culture. Yeah, he has his special move. He's you know, special, yeah. you got Pepper Breath and you got cancel. You got culture. Blue Blaster. You yeah. got yeah. <laughs> Diamond Storm, Renamon Desmond, <laughs> he answers back with cancel culture. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. There's like we were, we were reading a little bit about it on like that news thing, and it was like, uh, you know, like the 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 Digi Destined or whatever they are in that show <laughs> are like they don't really care about like you know like people are being coerced by woke coach woke culture into <laughs> believing only one idea, but then when they learn about like uh, cancel culture or something, they're like. Oh no, you're right. We should go fight whatever this is. <laughs> I I'm like I'm I'm very curious. Like I do want to find that and find a translation of it. I want it so bad. <laughs> I, no, I would yeah. pay so much money to have it. <laughs> no, that's like yeah, that's some like holy grail shit. I want. I I I, I, I need to see that. I, but I, I hope somebody does like localize it. Yeah, like I, I want to hear it like with English references oh, and stuff because I don't know what cancel culture looks like in Japanese. <laughs> I want, I want, so I want, uh, what's her name? Rika to go like, let's get this dummy. Well, and then he goes like, that word's ableist. And then, yeah. and it, well, I think the only difference is that I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Japanese culture too well, but it seems like they're might, like, unlike America, they might actually have like repercussions there. <laughs> Hey, maybe. Like people might actually might have to like stop working. <laughs> At least I guess if you're an actor. I guess if you're like a manga artist, you could be a creep and no one will care. Oh god, yeah, you get fined like two hundred bucks yeah. and go back to work. Yeah. Fuck Aroni Kenshin. Exactly. What was his whole thing? Uh nobody here Lotsky got uh, busted with like a terabyte of child porn. Yeah. He, oh. paid, he paid a small fine and he's yes. already back to work. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is he, yeah, he, he, he a bad dude. Yeah. He a bad dude. And Rurouni Kenshin was like, it was like a very formative piece of media for me growing up. Same like, here. Fuck <laughs> yep. that dude forever. I'm like, I'm, that's, that's like, I hear people tell me like, oh, these Netflix movies are good. I'm like, I want to watch them, but I can't. <laughs> I feel weird. Do you want their... <laughs> I watched the Samurai X one. It's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Hey, no, no, that guy. No, 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 it's like, I'll steal them. Yeah. I will Yeah, steal them. Yes. Yeah. That, 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 that's, yeah, that's what I do with monsters. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I won't give them money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You either go that route, or you go um, like you buy it used from just some rando. Oh yeah. You yeah. Know? But I guess that falls back into what we were talking about earlier. When I was like, that's why I wasn't sure if some of the stuff is intentional or not, or some of his criticism. Because knowing his like future, you kind of see it in his past. I'm like, is he criticizing internet cult? Like, I don't know what extent he's. Do- it's hard without seeing the whole thing. But I, I don't know if he's criticizing internet culture as a whole so far, or just, like, I, I, I'm not sure of it, what it's happening yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or maybe he sees this, like, like, like he has this vision of, like, everyone's going to be connected, and then sees cancel culture as, like, they're ruining the connection. <laughs> <laughs> totally. 
so it's yeah i'm 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 very interested cuz now i guess so we've there's 13 episodes so there's seven left i feel yeah. like that's like we just saw like act 1 maybe a little bit of act 2 yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel like the sister disappearing is the end of Act One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it it it's weird how like five and especially six, it's like all of a sudden the show has a plot, and I didn't realize how bad I wanted it to like start doing things. Because like the first four episodes, like things are just kind of happening, and it's weird. Oh yeah, you know, and I, then and then eventually it's yeah. like, oh, this is like a normal show now. No, yeah. totally. It's it, but it, it 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 is one of those things where like. I, I did I, I really enjoyed those first four episodes, but I could totally I I completely understand if someone's like this is not for me. <laughs> like, I, I, I like it's one of those things where it's like yeah I like I I, I do like uh, it's it's such a fine line because I like some of those those experimental films or like experimental TV shows like that. But sometimes I fucking hate them. There's nothing worse than watching bad experimental filmmaking or anything yeah. like that. It's like mm-hmm. yeah. when it's good, it's good. But when it's bad, it's like I would rather watch like. An episode of Everyone Loves Raymond, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I don't. My tolerance for something like that shit is bad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, it, <laughs> like David Lynch is one of my fil- favorite filmmakers and like creators, but I feel like he's inspired so much horrible shit. <laughs> I just, I just watched the other day. I watched that short film where he interrogates a monkey for murder. Oh yeah, that one, yeah, yeah. it's a good time. Yeah, that a one's great fun. Time with that. That's the most recent thing he's made. Really? <laughs> yes. He has not made anything since that. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen that, and I've seen 1984 Dune recently. It's, those are the only David Lynch things I've seen, actually. <laughs> that, <laughs> getting around to Twin Peaks one of these days. Everybody says that's his best movie, 1984 Dune. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. I think, all he's known for, he's really. Got, he's got so a laser a... gun for magic words. That's great. <laughs> his, his name's a killing word. He loves when Sting has a sex knife fight. <laughs> yeah, he does. Boy, does he. <laughs> I am not even exaggerating. Well, no, yeah. that's 100% accurate. No, I've, I've heard such wild stories about, like, the Dune movie that when I saw, like, the new one, I was like, this is so tame. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was disappointed by one thing in, in Doom 2021. Timothy Chalamet is very happy to see Jason Momoa, like, every time he sees him. He always goes like Duncan, and he like jumps into his arms and gets swung around like a little kid. And then, <laughs> and like, look, I do the same. It's Jason Momoa. Are you kidding me? I yeah, do the same thing. Absolutely. But then in Dune 1984, he goes Duncan, just shakes his hand. <laughs> Ordinary, very just two couple dudes. This wasn't guys being dudes, all right? <laughs> these were just dudes being dudes. These were, these, okay? were, these were dudes being professionals. These so were dudes being professionals. They no shook way. each other's hands yeah. like a couple of heterosexual grown men. <laughs> I was disgusted. <laughs> disgusted. But then he does a lot of cool stuff after. He's, he has magic words for his laser guns. He teaches everybody else Ooh. the magic words for the laser guns. <laughs> and then they say his name and it's even more magic. <laughs> Blows <laughs> things up. They're just like, Paul! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a great time. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess... Where where do you guys see Lane going? <laughs> I have no cry. fucking clue. Not a single goddamn clue. <sighs> yeah, like you were talking about the show yes. as a whole. Um, yeah, that's a good fucking question. I I think there's so okay. This this is where I think Lane is going. So they introduce like the psychic kids, right? Yes. Oh, good. Um, they introduce the psychic kids, and um, I think we're headed towards some kind of like. Akira Evangelion like consciousness connection sort of thing mm-hmm. where it's like everyone's going to be connected and they're going to be connected you know by the wires yeah 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 and um, I, th- I think that's what they're headed towards and like Lane is going to try to stop it but then maybe accept it as wire Jesus but that's that's my guess at this point yeah okay I think that's yeah I I, 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 I like where that's going, too, because I like, like I said, I, I think I feel like is going to be the one to try and save her type thing. I feel like that's where that's going. But I do see, mm-hmm. yeah, there's going to be some sort of thing where people are, like, trying to destroy humanity and, like, move, shift it, its consciousness into this thing. Because people seem more like they're, like, oh, you like that guy who gives her that info death about the second kids is like, I'm literally just, like, dying in this place, and this is the way I want to die is slowly in this, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In whatever this place is. I just want them to answer, why is her floor so wet? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Yes. The bedroom floor is like, it is covered in a, a layer of water. 
It splashes when she walks on it. Yeah. And she, I need to know why. She she runs because someone sets a bomb in her apartment, it seemed like. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there's, there's like, a whole, um, like, she goes from, like, oh, I'm going to upgrade my computer a little bit, to all of a sudden, like, her room has turned into, like, a cyberpunk server room yeah. that has, like, you know, l- green liquid cooling in, like, big-ass, like, human-sized tubes. Like, <laughs> she really turns in her room into, like, an 80s OVA room. And I love oh, her man. dad pokes his head in and goes, like, damn, the kid's been busy, and then just kind of leaves. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you did good. <laughs> yeah. You didn't even I, ask, like, how she brought in all the gear to turn this into Dexter's lab. You oh, know, yeah. It's just, like, all of a sudden it's there. Well, to be fair, I feel like that's how, like, grandparents would look at a lot of computer stuff that we do. Yeah, Like, what, what are all these cables? What do you have all these things running to? It's like, I swear. Why does this your all has keyboard light up? Why do you need two monitors, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, those buttons on the side of your mouse for you know just don't get it uh, yeah i'm gaming <laughs> <laughs> i do that's like oh man that's like peak good aesthetics is that computer room when it's all fucking decked out i mean that's the thing i, I i'm sad that it looks like it got blown up because it's not she's not gonna go back yeah. there yeah. that's been my favorite place to be in this whole show <laughs> totally. is that room well that's that's the wild part is that like it, it explodes like the guy says it's like a parasite bomb or something mm-hmm. that got into your like like your your pressure like gauge like like she like she has so many computer parts going that they can explode and kill her like mm-hmm. what <laughs> what is what has she done <laughs> yeah but also now i'm out with these like i don't know if these people are the knights or not either because they seem like they like i don't know if the knights are it's either going to be these are the knights and they're misunderstood maybe or they are not their organization fighting the knights i feel like that's going to be one of two things with these people yeah because they seem like they're like she's they're like get down like they say very calm before the thing blows up and yeah. like something so i i i'm it's either going to be like this is a false thing to lure you in or this is like we're fighting against these things. yeah i mean there could also be some kind of situation where okay mm. follow me down this path mm. where we the Everything we're watching is actually inside the computer, oh. and that they are like Matrix boys who can see what's going to happen slightly before oh. it happens. Oh. You know, so they're, they're they're not really real. They're not really there, yeah. like what they say. Yeah, because there are these like glitches in the system. Oh, and there's also we have there's like a fucking murder child that showed up at some point too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like forgot this, about that. They, yeah. they don't go anywhere with it. He's, but that's yet. it. Yeah, but like so, I'm like I don't know. Like there's all yeah. There's a bunch of stuff that they're just slow there's so much stuff that's what like <laughs> well yeah because you have this like okay you have reality and you have the wired mm-hmm. and then you have the wired which is being used potentially as this like kid k-i-d-s psychic channeler thing that is doing so you have reality internet metaphysical psychic power reality all like there's all these things are kind of like commingling i shouldn't say that there's like a psychic reality but like you you have so much going on yeah in, in that or at least those three things feel like a lot to me in that like you want to know what's going on it's like if the matrix had psychic powers yeah mm-hmm. it's also the year before the matrix too yeah oh, yeah shit, you're right <laughs> yeah that's a good point yeah, because Matrix is 99, right? I think Probably. so. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. That is funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Like, like, I feel like... I do feel like this is going to be a show, too, that, like, when I finish it, I feel like there will be good... It feels like they they do breadcrumbs without, like, real, like, obvious breadcrumbs. Yeah. Well, I so I did a little bit of review, or, like, I read a few reviews about the show a little bit ahead mm-hmm. of time. And one of the things I've heard, and this is going to probably be a huge shocker, is that the ending is confusing. What? Uh, yeah. So, so be ready for that. All right. Like confusing in that some people found it very dissatisfying. So it, I think we're in the same way that my brain hurts right now trying to analyze the first six episodes. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to be talking about them at like some get together sometime and just like trying to piece together what we saw. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's like that's like of the time too. I mean, that's still. I mean, I personally like the last two episodes of Eva Gilly, the original show. Where they Same, just, like yeah. where they ran out of stuff, and it's just like <laughs> here's people talking in like just philosophical terms and yeah. like barely any context. Yeah. <laughs> but is Shinji realizing that he's he's worth living? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and well, and I hated those episodes when I saw them the first time. <laughs> They've grown on me since then, but. Um, 
Yeah, I could definitely see how, like, because, yeah, I know I know other people who still to this day don't like the last two episodes of even Yeah. Because it is, it is such a tonal shift mm. from everything. Totally. But, but they, got, they got to make a movie. We'll see what uh, what uh, Serial Experiments Lane gets to do. Oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> he gets to make a, cult, a play about cancel culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to see Lane just be like, you know who the real threat is? Is all these uh, lefties online. <laughs> Blue check marks. <laughs> It's the Hollywood elite that are the real uh, problem on the internet. <laughs> They're going to ruin the wired for everyone. She's going to come to Bean Dad in a dream and give her a second chance, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Lane's going to assemble were... a team of canceled people. It's Bean Dad. The <laughs> 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 TikTok. Who else is going to be? Um... <laughs> I love I love the idea of like Bean Dad being the Captain America with Elaine, the Digimon writer, and like the woman from the Mandalorian. <laughs> it's like it's time to save the internet, guys. This is what we need. Then they just move to parlor. Yeah. <laughs> Is that website still up? I know, I maybe, but I know they've like had like five like identity heists like on that. Of course, like, yeah. <laughs> I I did like for a while like a bunch of like comedians you could just like hop on there and get verified as someone fake, like a real person. Really? People were people on the horizon like I'm John Voight. <laughs> <laughs> <Talk about rules. laughs> They're just desperate to get on there. Mm-hmm. I love it. Oh, man. Well, okay, final thing I want to talk about the show. Um, no, there's more stuff we got. We got to talk about the game that also came oh, out. Oh, yeah. God, there's so oh, much of this thing. It's a PlayStation game. Yeah, there's yeah. a PlayStation game. It seemed incredibly intimidating, so I didn't play it. It's, uh, so I did <laughs> I watched play, a video instead. I did play a, a couple hours of it, uh, and, and I, I intend to go back. I wasn't, I, I certainly wasn't bored at all. But, uh, this is a PlayStation game that came out alongside the the anime um they are both as canon as the other one i don't necessarily know how that works well because they seem they're different plots almost yeah. right like serial experiments lane is what we've been talking about this entire time and like the the show or the game is about like a therapist and lane and they're basically like you're reading di- you're reading their conversations in therapy mm-hmm. and then you're reading lane's diary and the therapist's diary, as well as her, like, letters to her colleagues. Yeah. And you're just kind of, like, going through that as things escalate. So I don't even know if it has anything to do with the, the Wired as much. I, I mean, where I got to, it didn't. And the, the thing is about, about it is that, like, you know, it's it's very intentionally obfuscated, like, what the order is supposed to be. Like, there are, they do order, like, you know, it's, it's you know, therapy log, you know, 001, 002, etc. But, like... A lot of the time, you can't actually access the next one in a sequence. A lot of the, mm. like you'll you'll go to like okay, I watched one and two. Let's go to three, and then Lane will try to open it, and then she can't, and so you're just like, oh, I got to go somewhere else. Um, and yeah, the the story is like mostly told air quotes from the perspective of the therapist, like because we don't really get like a lot of Lane diaries, at least from the beginning. It's like mostly Lane and the therapist in their meetings, and then the therapist's like audio diaries. And it's kind of just ordinary, you know, stuff that a woman in her late 20s would be dealing with. You know, she's like, oh, I ran into my friend from college. She looks great and she got married. She's got a kid on the way. Man, I I should start working on, you know, getting (laughs) myself together. You know, like very normal stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when she and Lane talk, it's just about, you know, what house, what's school like? And why do you, what do you like to do after school? And like, what is that your, is that your favorite stuffed animal there? Like very ordinary things, you know. (laughs) Um, so I don't know where the fuck that goes, but it's very interesting. I've heard it it really starts to deal with, like, mental health and mental health issues in, like, a very honest way. At least going by that Hazel person's video. Shout out to all the Hazel out there. It's one of my favorite YouTubers. Yeah. So that was, that was basically my, my, I'm like, I might play it now that it's in English, but I don't know. There's, it's, it's a lot to take it. I, I just struggle with, like, really heavy things sometimes, like, getting through those, so... If, if you do decide to, like, just abandon any hope of playing, of, like, going through it in a cohesive order, just click whatever button is closest to your cursor and go from there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the best you're going to get, I See think. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. 
I could play that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it it's just, cool. You play literally just on the browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah just, I'll, I'll do that. It's got save files and everything. You know, you just... then hell yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the person in the video recommended almost starting a book club thing, so maybe we gotta... We hey, gotta yeah, oh, maybe. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, I like it. Yeah. Well, I guess the only last thing I want to say, theme song rules. It's very oh, 90s. Yes. Oh, yeah, and, wonderful. Oh, yes. I'd be, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention that, because yeah. we listen to it, like, every time. Yeah, so. <laughs> never skipped it. It's, yeah. It just, yeah, it sounds like dream pop to me. It's, like, really weird. Yeah. I'm like, this sounds like just, like, a fucking, like, Mazzy Star song. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, this is the music I listen to. <laughs> I find this very pleasant about this story about a girl going insane. Yeah. <laughs> I listen to this very ethereal dream pop music. Yeah. It fits, yeah. Well, and the theme song, the, the imagery, too, I like, as the show is going on and she was becoming like, why are Jesus? It's like, she's in people's TVs mm-hmm. looking at them in the same way that she's like connected with everybody. It's like, it's all, it's all coming together. The yeah. plot is doing things. <laughs> she's, she's yelling at that couple making out in front of the TV. Yeah. Saying, you stop that. That's not you Christian. Stop that. Yeah, not, 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 <laughs> not in your house. Yeah. You. Not in front of Wired Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wired Jesus would be so There's mad. kids in this nightclub. Be respectful. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's, let, I guess let's get to the rating system then. Yeah. Um, Brendan, as a special guest here, what, uh, what, so our rating system, mm. we'll give you the run through, uh, it's keep watching, meh, and total garbage. Uh, where, where do you fall on Oh, it? I'm definitely gonna keep watching. I'm gonna keep watching. I guess almost 20 years of, it took me 20 years to go back to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it worked! <laughs> finally made it. I finally, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I mean, but it is definitely one of those things that I feel like could fall apart at the very end, yeah. but mm-hmm. it has a. I feel like it has a very high risk of that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I will keep watching, but I'm. It's, it, that's kind of why it's exhilarating, though. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's. It's juggling a, or it's spinning a lot of plates. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. I. Th- I think I'm also in keep watching. Like. I don't. I think if we would if we were a podcast that just did the first four episodes, I'd be like pretty in the meh mm. camp like it, it, the show did feel like yeah. it dragged a bit for me but now that things are kind of starting to happen and all that and like all the pieces are in place i'm like oh okay i can appreciate those first four episodes more now yeah let's see what happens uh yeah i'm pretty much in the same camp i do want to keep watching it uh like you said like it's it's carrying so much stuff right now i feel like it's very likely that it's gonna just kind of drop all of it. Like, there's there's so many plot threads. We got seven more episodes to do this. Like, how the fuck are we gonna make this all make sense? <laughs> uh, and it sounds like they don't. But, like, I mean, also, it's been 23 years and people are still talking about this show. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, now more than ever, I feel. Like, mm. I've seen more lame talk and, like, pictures and stuff on Twitter and stuff that maybe I've ever seen. So Yeah. Well, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, it is, like, as maybe, like, physically with how we interact with the internet yeah. wrong as it got it like a lot of the themes of like being disconnected from like the people around you mm-hmm. while being connected online mm-hmm. um the, the fact that we are all connected you know all the time is is a real thing yeah so and the metaverse exists now you know? oh jesus uh, christ what's his no. ass the facebook guy oh. uh, the meta guy yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know <laughs> he made the metaverse yeah now. facebook isn't a thing anymore. Yeah, yeah excuse me it's yeah. got the infinity symbol um, yeah, and now we can all be Xbox Live avatars and, and talk to each other Jesus, in, no. in, our, in our meetings. Yeah. I, I'm, like, praying that this is some marketing thing to make us forget that, like, Facebook had all those scandals, you know? It's like, Probably. that was Facebook. This, this is, is meta. meta. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, they're yeah. Just, it's just, like, a total rebrand. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, because, like, I've, I've been, unfortunately, keeping up with other metaverse projects oh, for, like, really? the last like a year or so and they're all like the scammiest weird th- of things of course they are so i'm like please don't let any of this be real it's so stupid i have been petitioning the uh, hq at my work to to uh, adopt metaverse like i want to start <laughs> having meetings uh, as a little <laughs> avatar oh my yeah. god like, i think that's the perfect space for a nonprofit i think <laughs> <laughs> i i love the idea of just like all right well everybody's going to work from home but you also need to set up the VR thing in your own. <laughs> so, that, so you need to clear out your furniture, a whole room and everything. I love it. I'm so ready. <laughs> it's the dumbest shit. And I'm so for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, all right, well, let's let's wrap up here. Uh, Brendan, you got any you got anything you want to plug at the end here? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess you could follow me on Twitter, Letterbox, Mean Old Pig. I just mainly talk about movies because that's all I. I guess I have been talking a lot about One Piece lately. There you go. Yeah. Letterbox has become like my favorite social media right now it's the because best one. yeah, because it's just like oh, what did my friend watch? Oh, what did they think about this? You know? <laughs> yeah, it's just like I like the low stick. Yeah, so you can just follow me on those things. Yeah, that's that that, that that's about it. <laughs> Brandon, what's your favorite Sonic? Ooh, like character or game? Both. Probably three. It's your favorite character. Three. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, it's. It's big. No, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Respect. Hell yeah. Snake, yeah. what's your favorite Sonic? Big was in... Wait. No, no, no. He's, no, no, he's two separate in... questions. Oh, okay, okay. He's uh, in Adventure, Adventure 2, Heroes, some other ones. Uh, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't most fascinated by Sonic 06. That's fair. So, yeah. Um, I mean, there's two copies of it in this house, right? There now. are. Yeah, uh, we got the Xbox 360 and the PS3 version. Yeah. yeah. We could do the worst race. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the PS3 loses that one. No, the PS3 has a uh, faster loading time. Really? From what I've heard. Yeah. Hey, there if you're we gonna go. if you're gonna speed run, you should. But I mean, we're talking about like in, instead gonna... of like a two minute loading time, it's like uh, a minute forty. So like it's faster. Hey, that adds up but... over the course of the run. I oh, mean, it's you bet be it does. Another loading time after every cutscene. I know. Yeah. yeah, I'm totally screwed on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's um... how I went. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's that's and then if I had to pick one. Uh, this is, uh, Sonic. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good pick. I know that it's a good one. Sonic yeah. character. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Um, what? Okay. What? What's? What's your favorite Sonic game? Uh, the one I'm gonna put on, like you know, if you just sit me you in have, front of every pick, Sonic you have game, to pick one. You yeah, can't, you can't wish you watch. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if I, if like, if you put me in front of every Sonic game and you say play a Sonic game, I'm gonna pick Adventure Two. Like this, okay. that's just that's just how it is. Um, I can believe that. I have a big I have a big soft spot for Knuckles Chaotix though. It's really good. I said no wishy washy. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> I like, said no wishy washy. It's an honorable mention. That's all it is. All right, favorite character? Uh, either T. Call or Knuckles. Sonic is so disappointed right yeah. now. I mean, I mean, Sonic's cool, but <laughs> he's so. Cool. Oh no! Wait, no, it's E102 Gamma. Never mind. The one who kills himself in Adventure. <laughs> There's so much suicide in this episode. Yeah, well, but it's suicide to save an animal's life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So that's more self sacrifice. And the the animal's like lady friend is out there. Uh, the the real thing that we learn at the end is that Serial Experiment Lane takes place entirely inside the motherboard of E102 Gamma. Exactly. So we're oh. this is uh, everything we're witnessing is what happens at the end of his life as yeah. he frees the bird. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. What are you plugging, Bakri? Other than oh. your favorite Sonic questions. Yeah, uh, I have a SoundCloud, <laughs> uh, SoundCloud.com slash Octomammoth, uh, and I have a Twitter, uh, Twitter.com at eight mammoth, the number eight. And then the word mammoth. Uh, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's right. Yeah. Someone followed me on SoundCloud today and liked two of my Yeah. Track. It was an actual person, not a spam bot. Doesn't Internet happen much. Internet famous. Internet famous. Yeah, we're yeah. getting there. Yeah. Now, 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 now you need to DM them and directly be like, hey, uh, here's my podcast. <laughs> here's these other projects I'm working on. You know, they had really a, spread it out. They had a Sonic-themed avatar, which makes me think they know me from somewhere. But, like, mm. I don't know who it is. It's <laughs> stressing me out. I've got a stalker. Uh, it's at, it's Sonic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is Sonic. Yeah. Well, it's an it's an Amy Rose after Sonic themed. It's Amy. Oh, okay, it's, it's Amy, Amy Rose. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Amy's a good character. I like Amy. <laughs> it's, it's good. Um, so I'll just say, so you follow me. I'm Hentai Pete's Lord on Twitter. <laughs> Our plan for the next episode is to watch the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. It's a movie, uh, which is a whole movie, and so it's going to be a Christmas episode, which is my favorite. Um, so. Yeah. So, but we if it ends up not actually being a Christmas movie, then we're gonna watch. We're gonna do what we did last year and just kind of do a grab bag thing. Yeah, mm. we gotta find another Appmon uh, Christmas special. You know, they're not Digimon anymore. They're Appmon. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's honestly the Christmas episode was so good it that was, I don't even uh, care. It's about a. It's about a not a Digimon. It's about an Appmon that deletes December twenty fifth. Oh. And yeah. everybody, nobody has December twenty fifth on their phones or their computers anymore, and so they're like. Well, fuck, we can't have Christmas. And wow. they just, they just, you know, Christmas wow. is over. Yeah. So they and gotta go they save to Christmas. Kill it. Yeah. Yeah. 
They have wow. to kill him to save Christmas. Yeah. There's also a magic tree. It's great. It's yeah. such a good episode. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, so I'll post if we change, if we end up doing anything like that and somebody's mm-hmm. interested. Um, yeah, and also if you liked this episode, hate to be the YouTube guy, but like, you know, you can do the whole like like thing, post some bullshit, comment. It apparently helps the algorithm or whatever. Sure. And this episode might be weirdly screwed because I might put an 18 up thing. Uh, I usually do that whenever I do a trigger warning thing. Yeah, that's, so. that's fair, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, if you're um, listening on Spotify or Podbean or anything, just find a heart and click it. it yeah. Be next to this. <laughs> click just, it. If there's no heart on the platform you're listening to, just uh, uh, click a heart somewhere. Rip out your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Metal as hell. So we'll, we'll see what happens with this one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's that's it for us. Um, yeah. Well, anyways, um, just so everyone knows, it is currently uh, present day... Present time. <laughs> 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 <laughs>